Welcome back to Comic Book Wednesdays, a weekly series where we talk about comic books. We're your hosts, I'm Ian. I'm Al. And I'm Shane. Yeah, and we're back this week talking about Superior Spider-Man. This time issues uh, 10, 11, and 12. Uh, so, how we feeling now? Uh, we got, as, as we're continuing our uh, adventure here with Pete Toctopus... <laughs> It's, um, he's definitely setting out to prove something, whether it's to himself or to the ghost of Parker. Yeah. Well. <laughs> um, I, I think he's he's starting to lose his shit a little bit, though. You know, like, he's he's gotten to a point where... Um, you know, he, he just doesn't seem like he's sticking to his play of being Parker in Parker's world, you know what I mean? He has this, like, twisted sense of morality. Um, like, he... I, I literally think he believes he's doing the right thing. But he's always had this twisted sense, which is why he's a villain, a, a, a sociopath, you know? Yeah. Um... Is that what struck me about the whole um, prison sequence that we're in the middle of right now is that, like, he goes back to his cell, and you can tell he hates this place. You know, he has this, like, deep-seated hatred, and he's like, you know what, I'm going to be able to leave. Like, And he goes to the lengths of finding every single possible exit for Alist Alistair Smythe, um, and you see that as he's fighting him, as he's trying to run, and like everything's blocked off. The, there's late fire. Fire comes up at one point. There's lasers in the vents. Um, he like reinforces the wall. It's all it's all fucking crazy, you know. Um, and I feel like it's just it comes from that hatred of this place that he finds all these things, and I'm sure he just went back on personal um, experience too, you know. To add to that, I honestly, like, as a side note, I feel like they created another supervillain. And the only reason I say that is because uh, when Jameson landed on the raft and he was talking to, like, one of the guards, um, kind of like an unnamed guard, at least it felt like to me, where he was just like, where he was just like oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm the head of security. And he's just like, yeah, and under your watch all this happened and, like, you should be ashamed of yourself. So just keep your mouth shut. And then Spider Man showed up and he was just like, I know more than you. Yeah, they dude, they yeah. just like <laughs> shit they on that security shit. guard. They really did. And I was like, that's gonna be a super villain in like a few issues, I bet. <laughs> He's like, You're a worthless piece of shit. And then Spider Man shows up and tells him the same thing. <laughs> like, jeez. Um Nah. Ooh, we finally saw Goblin again. Uh, yeah, that, that was interesting. Goblin King, he's getting things set up. He's like bringing in people. He's saving them from uh, from Spider-Man's wrath. You know. I wonder I if they're gonna. Like that little. Uh... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I was gonna say. I wonder if they're gonna pull like a 180 with like and have like Goblin be this almost like hero character to these people because he's saving them from Spider-Man. Ooh. That's a good point. I didn't think of that. Damn. All right. But he's still a villain. Like, even oh, if he's oh, yeah, yeah, saving yeah. these people, <laughs> no, no, they're no, all <laughs> villains, too. <laughs> it would definitely be a, a demented take on a quote-unquote hero, and I use air quotes as much as possible. Yeah. When I he's say definitely that. building an army, though. I mean, you can see that in the baking. He's 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 going to go hard on Spider-Man. Which is funny, because he doesn't know it's uh, Ock, I don't think. Right. I wonder if he's going to be able to tell if he's different. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, is that... That Green Goblin, is that Norman Osborn or is that somebody else? I think it is Norman. 
Mm, okay. Who Which, I think I mean was... Norman and Ak have a deranged relationship, from most of my knowledge. Oh yeah, yeah, they don't have a good relationship at all. Like, I'm pretty sure he hates him. Yeah. So if he finds out that it's not Peter, I could see him doubling down. If he even if if he gets like a jokes are gonna give it away. Oh, absolutely. What was that, Shane? I'm sorry. I think the lack of jokes are gonna give it away. Because even oh, the yeah. cops are like, "Oh, is he trying to be funny? I miss the old Spider-Man." Yeah. He used to be funnier. Yeah, that, yeah, that's great. Oh, he used to be funny. Oh shit. Um, oh, do you like the? How do you feel about his relationship with the, uh, with Maria? I think is her name. Yeah, that's kind of weird. Is it weird because she's a midget owl? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a weird thing about midgets, so don't get me started. <laughs> I will. <laughs> uh, no, and and the same issue. I thought it was interesting that they had the parallel of uh, Mary Jane, that she's basically burning alive in a, a fire, and she's like, "Spider Man will save me," you know, and then he never comes. Not only does he not come, but it's a uh, a firefighter by the name of Pedro, <laughs> <laughs> who answers to Pete. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that was pretty good. Uh, but he did end up, I mean, he is kind of the one who saved her because he did call the fire department. Yeah. Yeah, so there's that. Uh, I actually do like the relationship that he's kind of developing with the... Um, the um, God, what's her name? Sorry. I believe it's Maria. Maria. I like that because Doc Ock, even when he's fucking demented and twisted... He still shows himself to be an academic. And the fact that he's favoring an academic, not just like... I mean, he, he's a fucking genius, and he knows more than she does. But he's, like, enjoying her because of, like, her cooking skill and, like, other stuff. She's a genius in her own way. And I just think that that's really interesting of, like, all the digs that he makes on Peter of, like, oh, Peter, you could have had this, you could have had that. And yet, he's, like, kind of doing his own thing which i just i think that's really interesting it's definitely fascinating it's a it's a it's a cool twist for the character um ooh, cool twist uh, not exactly a twist because we already knew what's happening but they did reference uh, hickman's avengers by saying the the avengers were in space which was i did see that mm -hmm. really fun and i love moments like that because you're like i know what that's about you know <laughs> That one, was of those, awesome. one of those fun that moments. Cool. Um, what else happened? I, ooh, um, all the villains that he kind of beat up, like, had got new suits and stuff and upgraded powers. Yeah, um, from uh, that dude's, like, nanobots or whatever they are. <laughs> Did the scene where, like, the um, his bots, like, climbed into Vulture's eyes... I was like, oh, God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was wild. Kind of reminded me of the scene. Kind of reminded me of the scene from, like, The Mummy where the scarab, like, goes under the dude's skin. Oh, And yeah. I'm like, ugh. Yes. Yikes. No. <laughs> yeah, it was fucking God, I so. grew up watching them. I love those movies. They're great. But, uh, yeah, it's fucking weird. Uh. <laughs> uh, eyeball things. I don't do eyeball things, you know? Yeah, no. Uh, Get your safety squints on. That's right. <laughs> safety squints engaged. Right, Zach? <laughs> I did think it was really, like, kind of... Kind of really fucked up in a, in a way, but I really want to know what happens now. When he went to Jameson and, and he was just like, Hey, I need to know... Like, cause I had an, you had an opportunity to keep yourself safe. Yes. Like, I need to know what the priority is here, and he's just like, you need to get, you need to get rid of him. And he's like, just so we're clear, I can kill him, and he's like, and he doesn't say that right, but he's like, you can do whatever. Do what you need necessary. to do. 
Yeah. He was to do it. He goes, necessary. okay, that's all I needed. Yeah, that was nuts. And he has it filmed. He's got to record it. Oh, God, yeah. He's going to use that against him at some oh, point. Oh, it's totally blackmailing him. Yeah. Yeah, he's got that recorded. That's going to be nuts. Dude, Pete's going to be feeling the repercussions for this when this is over. Just like for <laughs> ages. Just Yeah. I like to think as soon as he switches back is when Jameson is going to be like, Spider-Man! You know, like, <laughs> it's the, it'd be like almost instantaneously. Well, it'll be, it'll be Doc using that information to blackmail him and turn him against Spider-Man again, and that's when Pete will come back. <laughs> right, right. It'll be that moment. <laughs> Although I can't imagine Pete's mind being like, okay, I've come back. I now kind of have a girlfriend, but now I don't have a girlfriend anymore. I'm really fucking confused. Yeah. Who is this midget? No. <laughs> 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 Shit. No, you know what I really want? Um, I want to actually read the story where Jameson's wife gets killed by the Spider Slayer. It looks like it'd probably Ooh. really epic. That would um, cool. Yeah. Is know. that like this? So I was kind of getting that impression that like he is that one of the reasons he blames Spider Man is because. It's the Spider Slayer, and then he just targeted him. And he thought he should have been targeting Spider-Man. So, like, Jameson and Pete's beef go back years, years. Like, I'm telling you, like, since the original comics, he's always hated him. He's always hated him. Like, um, I even think there's a moment where he admits that he was, like, jealous of (laughs) Spider-Man. But... I'm sure, like, he, it's got something, like, there's probably parts of it there that adds to it, you know? But it was very petty. If you read some of the original stuff, man, it is, it's some petty stuff. Do they ever give, like, a reason why, like, did Parker ever do anything to Jameson to, like, just oh, he was cause a... him to be that way, or? Spider-Man was a dick. <laughs> like the early Spider-Man comics, he was addicted to Jameson, just for uh, no reason. Okay. Yeah, it really laid into that, like just kind of like that joking and stuff. It even right. got him in fights with other characters, like uh, Human Torch and stuff like that. That's cool. <laughs> it yeah. makes that scene in the uh, Tobey Maguire Spider-Man all the better, where like Jameson's just in his office and he like puts on the Spider-Man gear and he's pretending to run around and shoot webs and shit. <laughs> it's pretty great. Like, I hate him, but I'm not a superhero, so I'm mad. Yeah. There's a... I have to find it. When Pete um, reveals himself to Jameson, there's a very specific story where it's happening and there's like a long... It's like a whole issue dedicated to it. If we can find it, we should read it together just as a one-off. I think it'd be really cool. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, as far as this, these sets of comics, I don't really have anything much more to say. It, they were very action-packed. Um, we're really seeing auto progress. Um, but other than that, I there's not a lot of meat and potatoes here, you know? No, yeah, no, I agree. It's There's a couple of, like, plot points that are, like, building up to something, uh, whether mm-hmm. it's, you know, the, the Goblin King or... Pete, you know, Pete Doc Ock or Dr. Pete getting, um, <laughs> Dr. Pete, per- <laughs> getting permission to kill. Um, yeah. and I mean, knowing Otto, he, it, if it's, if it's a freebie and he's not going to get in trouble for it, he just might. But at the same time, like I could see him doing more of a grand scheme with that. Um, I will say one of the funniest moments that I saw was the first time we saw, uh, Kirk Connors, the lizard, like, the first time we saw him, he was like, why isn't he with the the dangerous ones? And they were like, oh, he's actually been behaving. And then they, like, open all the cell doors, and he, like, sniffs the air. He doesn't even look menacing. He just looks like a fucking gecko. Just, like, sniffs the air, and he's like, all right, cool, I'm out. Yeah, he's like, I'm fucking getting out of here. Yeah, I wasn't a fan of the uh, design of lizard in this one. No. 
It's a, it's very like docile, docile, demented, a little. Yeah, I, I like, can, I can see that. I, I, I know it's stupid, but I like the, uh, the '90s cartoon lizard. You know what I mean? Like the <laughs> I mean, there's a reason that a lot of the designs from there are so iconic. They're good. They're yeah. good designs. Um, I really like the design they did. They went for lizard in the. Um, Spider-Man 2 game that came out uh, last month. He looks fucking sick in that. Ooh, yeah, great. I haven't played it yet, so I don't have nothing to say. <laughs> <laughs> it looks good, though. The whole game looks fucking phenomenal. Yeah, it's, it's a really good game. Spider-Man fans definitely enjoy it, so... Alright, well... Uh, I think that is it for now, right? Yeah, I think that wraps it up pretty good. Okay. All right. So we we went through to issue twelve today this time. So we'll go thirteen, fourteen, fifteen next. Sound good? Sounds good. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, cool guys. All right. Uh, well, thanks again, everybody, for listening. Uh, if you if we, if you want to reach out to us, you can comment on our stuff. Um, if you're following through Shane uh, via live, you can always, I guess, message him. And if you have anything that you want us to read, exactly. anything like that, let us know. We'll be happy to read it, go over it, um, and you can read along. Well, thanks, everybody. You guys have a good night. Good night, y'all. Good night.